Welcome to Lab 2. What we do in Lab 2 is introduce our first question in the quiz show. So what you do is you open up your uh, program. If you, haven't, if you haven't opened it yet, just go the usual. Open up your um, C++. Go to where you have your file saved. Well, actually, Project Solution. Uh, and just open up uh, wherever you have it saved. In this particular method, you have saved it under C++. You made a file called Quiz Show. Now you open up VC Proj. And then just click Open. What we're going to be dealing with in this particular project is what's called object-oriented programming. So those of you who are interested in game design, or um, in particular types of animation, um, if you're going to program with that, you're going to use a lot of object-oriented programming. Okay, and it's it's really uh, a great concept that'll make your programming a lot easier. Old-fashioned methods, pages upon pages of programming, but with object-oriented programming, you define an object. For instance, for example, here they have a car. And they give it certain types of um, pro uh, properties like wheels, doors, and engines, and certain types of functions like speed, it turns, that kind of thing. Um, so an object is a special kind of data, has its own variables and functions. In our quiz show, um, we're going to have questions, and each one of these questions will have certain properties. Okay, here we're talking about classes. Classes are just, uh, it tells what variables and functions an object's going to have. Okay, here, here they have a, a, a car class. A car class can have so many wheels. Okay, and um, you can have um, different functions, different classes also. Um, you can have um, a vehicle class, which can include a car class and a truck class and a motorcycle class. So you can have classes within classes. So it, it gives you a lot of flexibility in programming if you can define a, cl a class. So in our quiz, um, quiz show here, we're going to have a question class. So you can make many question objects for your quiz show. And um, you don't have to start out from scratch for each question. You're going to find this gives you a lot of flexibility in your programming. So this is how C++ sets up a class. Okay, it gives it the you have the word class up here. Then you tell it what 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 is that class name it goes there. Then you list the variables and functions in between the curly brackets. And notice that when you define the class, you have to end it with a semicolon. Okay, now look in your code for that uh, line called using nameplace standard. Now we're going to add a couple of empty lines and type the comment, define the question class. Now under that we're going to type class, then question. Then we're going to add the curly brackets for the class just like you did for the main function. Now don't forget that semicolon after the closing bracket because this is a class definition. If you're going to define it, you're going to have to have, uh, with a class, you have to have a semicolon after that closing bracket. Okay, variables use uh, private and public sections. All right, private variables and functions, they can only be used by the object or by the object's functions. So you make your um, variables and functions private to be used by um, a particular class so that uh, you can control it better. Now we're going to add private variables to the question class. Each question object is going to have a question, four possible answers, an integer variable for the number of the correct answer, and the amount the user is going to win if they get the question right. So 
Under the opening curly bracket for the question class, we're going to type private. And notice that's a semi as a colon, not a semicolon. Okay. So add a new line under that, and we're going to type the string question text with a semicolon. Now we're going to enter our different strings for the answers. Here's the string for answer 1. Here's the string for answer 2. Here's the string for answer 3. Here's the string for answer 4. Here's the integer of the correct answer. And next we're going to do the integer for the prize amount. So what do we just do? We created an object and we gave it a we defined the class and gave it private variables. So now every time we have a question it's going to have four answers, a correct answer, and a prize amount. So we just defined that. Now every question that we ask is going to be an instance of the class. So question 1 is an instance of the question class. Question 2 is an instance of the question class. Question 3 is an instance of the question class. They're all going to have four answers, they're all going to have a correct answer, and they're all going to have a prize amount. So now we're going to complete the steps to create the instance of the question class. Don't forget, an instance of a class is an object. So now we're in the main function and we're going to create a few lines just after the uh, see out end line command that we ended with the last uh, lab. We're just going to comment here, create instances of the question. Right now we're only going to create one question, uh, but we're going to create more uh, in later labs for this project. So under that we're going to type question Q1 with a semicolon. Now all your objects, you know, don't only have private variables and functions, they have public variables and functions. All right, now you might have, for example, your player might have a knife, you might have a um, machine gun, you might have a bow and arrow, you might do karate chops, okay? And each one of those particular, um, each one of those particular weapons can put hurt on an enemy, right? Maybe one will give one point damage, one might give two point damage, one might give three point damage, but they all are giving damage. So your damage would be a public variable or public function. Okay, So they would all share that hurt that they would give the enemy. Those would be public variables and functions as opposed to private. Like maybe your arrow has a flight, but your karate chop won't have a flight. And, um, you know, your sword won't have a flight particularly. So here's an example of using public and, and private um, variables. Okay, so here you have um, your class car. So which of these can the main function also use? Well, the private functions only belong to the car, but you can have public functions that can be used by the main functions, right? So the, what are the public functions? Void speed up and void slow down. Okay, we're getting into um, methods. Methods are just a function that belong to a class. For example, you might have a ball that bounces. You know, your sword's not going to bounce. Your player's probably not going to bounce. But your ball's going to bounce, right? So that function belongs to the ball class. So that's called a method. Methods are also called member functions. You'll, you'll hear them used that way uh, both ways in literature. They're the same thing, really. 
So methods need to be just like any other function. A method is just a type of a function. Okay, don't get confused. It's not another thing. It's just a type of function. Okay, method belongs to a class. All right, methods have to be declared. They have to be written, and they have to be called, just like any other function. So how is a function declared inside a class? We use a, a special method. We're, uh, we're, we declare a method next. Now we've got our we've already set up our privates um, our private methods for the um, class. Now we're going to declare our public methods. So um, declaration just tells the computer that you're going to be using this function, and you know you're going to write the function later. So I just come down and I write public, and um, then I put my colon, then I click enter, then I type void, then I type set values, then I type string one, two, three, four, five times, then I type int, int twice because I have two integers, I close my, um, I close it, and then I put my semicolon. Now remember, what's a method? A method is just a function that belongs to the class. So when we write a method, you write a little bit differently than you write how you write a function. See these two colons here? You put in your class name, like here would be ball, and your method would be bounce. So now we're going to write a public method. We're going to uh, do this for the question class. Other parts of your program are going to use this method to store the question, answers, and the other information about each question. So after the last curly brace in your program, you're going to add two lines. Then you're going to type store values for, you're going to give the comment, right? Store values for question variables. Under that, you're going to type void question with your two colons, set values, and you put all your strings in there like this. And you guys declare your question string, your four answer strings, your correct answer integer, and your pay amount integer. Then of course you're going to add your curly brackets for the method. Now remember you don't need a semicolon after these brackets. That's only when you're declaring the method. Now inside the curly brackets, I'm going to type question text is equal to Q. What this is going to do is it's going to store the uh, past value in the variable text, question text. Now I'm going to type answer 1, answer 2, answer 3. I'm going to put what, where they're going to be stored. Answer 1 is going to be stored in A1. Answer 2 is going to be stored in A2. Answer 3 is going to be stored in A3. Answer 4 is going to be stored in A4. Correct answer is going to be stored in CA. Correct answer is going to be stored in CA. And payment amount is going to be stored in, prize amount is going to be stored in PA. Now you're going to call a method different than you call a function because uh, remember a method is tied to an object. So you might say ball bounce, ball bounce. So you're going to have um, the method is attached to the object. So uh, it's just called a little bit differently than you call your function. So the computer needs to know which object uses the method. That's all. So you attach the name of the method to the end of the object. Separate them with a period. That's how you call it. So now in our program we're going to call the method and we're just going to set, call the set values method. So now I'm going to add a few empty lines just above the last uh, curly brace in the main function. Now I'm going to cut, uh, type question one type. Now I'm going to set the values of the question instances. So basically what I'm doing is I'm giving the different values here to the question. You can see these are the, are the absolute answers for the first question. 
Also along at the end I see that the correct answer is answer 3 and it's worth uh, $2,500. Okay. <laughs> now remember the strings and integers you're typing like eject the CD and 2500 are the values that are passed on to the method. The method is going to store these in the question object's private value, private variables. Here's something that's also that's introduced in this chapter is um, and putting in line breaks when you want to make it your code easier to read. Um, your uh, computer program ignores line breaks so that you can use them uh, for yourself to make something easier for yourself to read. So we're going to do that with our um, our set value statement. So we're just going to put some formatting in here. So we're going to do just add it. We're going to enter there. Don't enter in the middle of your string. <laughs> we just tabbed it over. Then we click enter again. Enter. We're just setting off the, the different um, commands here, uh, values rather, and you're going to be able to see them easier. Now you're all set to check your work. We're in lab two, we're ending it up, we're on page 21. So make sure all you're, you're going to get is your title screen. You want to make sure your code's okay. And here's what your codes should look like right here. So what you're going to do is you're you're going to bring, you're going to um, debug your program. So this is what you should see. Now, if you have errors or particular things, you probably should look for your void set values line has uh, it's you written string four times and uh, five times, and you have two integers. Did you set all your values? You should have one, two, three, four, five answers, a three and a 2,500 for your set question one set value.